Okay, so this week I want to talk about uh, NVIDIA, specifically about their latest unveiling. So this week during CES, there's been a lot of new tech reveals, with one of the bigger ones being that NVIDIA finally unveiled their new 50 series cards. Uh, but the focus on the unveiling wasn't necessarily how much they've improved the hardware since the last generation. The focus was all about all the, how all these new cards enable new technologies that they've developed that utilizes AI. It's sort of impossible these days to avoid the topic of AI in tech. And uh, yeah, here we are talking more about it, I guess. So yeah, Nvidia unveiled their new 50 series cards, the 5070, the 5070 Ti, the 5080, and the 5090. But the main focus wasn't really the cards, it was all about talking about AI and all the stuff that they've developed. And uh, specifically, they unveiled their next iteration of DLSS, which is an upscaling technology. Um, there are a couple of different upscaling technologies, but DLSS is Nvidia's. Uh, what does DLSS stand for? I forgot. Deep learning super sampling, I knew that. Yeah, there's a new iteration of DLSS and, uh, you know, I always find it kind of fascinating how, you know, some rendering technologies you know, or techniques get like a lot more interest from people. Uh, and DLSS is one of those like things where people get really hung up on this tech and I don't quite understand why because it's, it's you know, okay, it's, it's cool, it's interesting, but it's one of many different things that we utilize as game developers to, make our games run better or have, you know, different features. But so yeah, I guess Nvidia has done a really good job at marketing DLSS. So much so that it's almost to an annoyance because there are a lot of really interesting new techniques that improve rendering outside of AI and upscalers. Um, but it is cool tech and it's clearly usable for a lot of people and a, real, a lot of people are obviously really excited about it. So the thing that they talked about a lot is that this next generation of DLSS introduces multi-frame generation, which extends beyond the existing technology they have on their, uh, on their 40 series cards. So frame generation is basically using an AI network of optical flow together with a bunch of motion vectors from the game's geometry to be able to generate frames between like classic traditionally rendered frames. Uh, they actually use different terms for these, the ren classic render frames. They call it like traditionally rendered frames. They call it brute forced rendered frames, which I think is kind of funny. But with this new technique, each like brute force rendered frame will now instead have three future frames generated. This is actually kind of similar to something we do for network prediction models. In multiplayer games, there's a technique where you're trying to like predict input packets uh, through the network from other players. So like instead of, you know, every frame like expecting a result from the player, it's instead uses like the input that it's received before to try and like predict what the data will look like when it when you receive it from, from uh, the network. With the Main difference here is that like once it gets to the point where it's actually going to display the correct frame, it just displays the correct frame and then goes from there. With netcode, you actually have to do rollbacks when you get the actual data to like make sure that you actually your prediction actually matched, you know, what happened. There's no need for this. So I don't know why I made that parable. I just it just popped into my head for some reason. So yeah, it will uh, render frame, try and predict what it will look like in the future, and then it will render the next traditional frame. And uh, it uses something that they call flip metering to be able to like ensure that there's optimal uh, frame pace in between uh, the traditional render frames and the uh, AI generated frame. And using uh, this technique, it will result in better performance overall and lower VRAM. And all these games are going to support DLSS uh, on day zero, including Satisfactory, apparently, which we did not know that. <laughs> But this is not the only thing they've announced. They also announced that they are improving their ray con reconstruction for all the RTX cards. So not only the 50 series cards will get this. Uh, they've also improved their super resolution for all RTX card. And this new implementation is in beta currently. And they've also improved uh, deep learning anti-aliasing, uh, which is also in beta. From my understanding, the data set that they've used to train their AI models are based on game captures that they've done themselves. So there shouldn't be any like ethical issues with, you know, stealing someone else's data to be able to train their AI models that a lot of tech companies do, but 
I don't know. But the main reason why I wanted to make this video is because I've seen a lot of uh, people have concerns uh, whether game developers sort of will see DLSS as some excuse to like not optimize their games. Is this just gonna be a thing where game developers just like don't optimize their games and just make them and just hope that AI will just take over and make everything run fluently? And I kind of wanted to address that a little bit. So I feel like I've heard this argument a lot recently where people feel like games aren't optimized these days. Like we're, we're, we're not doing what we could to make games run uh, fluently anymore. And, and I personally kind of find this argument uh, like a little bit ridiculous because this argument has existed way before DLSS. It's, it's existed for, for since the dawn of games, basically almost. I think there is some overarching truth to the matter that like software these days isn't as optimized as it could be. Uh, but the thing is games have always had this inherent need to be more optimized th than anything else uh, because of the limitations that games already face uh, and because of the need to be real time. I typically find that game developers and uh, regular software developers have a very like different perspective on like the baseline need to make things as optimized as possible. You know, we've always tried to push what is possible to re create. Like if you think about it, like rendering games is kind of insane given what we're doing. Like we're rendering thousands of millions of polygons in like less than 16 milliseconds. And yeah, it's kind of insane. Like all these upscaling techniques, they don't really solve these kind of problems. Like your, your game is still gonna run kind of bad, even if it is using these upscaling techniques. You save a little bit of performance, but it's not enough always to, to get your game to like the proper baseline maybe if you're suffering from poorly optimized games. You know, upscaling is one of many optimization techniques we take into consideration. And usually what we'll find is like, there's no one solution that will solve a lot of stuff. Usually you need to use a lot of different uh, techniques to be able to optimize your games. The other thing that I also think will have a bigger effect than, and, and people have talked about this too, where you'll still feel the effects of a slower base render frame rate, you'll still have issues such as input lag, you know, even if the GPU fills in the blanks. Um, that is unless you implement like proper, you know, frame rate independent input. But most games try to avoid that because it comes with a lot of complexity. I do think that these upscalers will be more, you know, widely adopted in the future though, because it takes very little effort to implement these upscalers uh, such as DLSS. And so there's no real reason not to do it. Some of the demos show games running at really low frame rates, such as like 22 FPS. Uh, and I think a lot of people have found it to be quite disappointing to see that like, these cars haven't really improved that much compared to the previous generation of cars when it comes to like traditional rendering, you know? And I think it's important to acknowledge that a lot of people don't want to rely on, you know, these techniques to be able to run their games and would prefer to brute force frames, you know, to avoid all these like artifacts that these previous techniques have had. I also see a trend where people want games to run, you know, even faster than 60 FPS, so even faster than 120 FPS. Uh, and you know, there are now monitors that can display like 240 hertz refresh rate and people sort of expect games to like get up to that point as well. And I don't think people realize, you know, how much effort it takes to go from like 120 FPS to 240 FPS versus like going from 30 to 60 FPS. Upscaling techniques such as DLSS is a really attractive alternative since these frames spend so little time being displayed. One thing that I kind of find problematic though is when they showed off like they had like a demo with full ray tracing with neural rendering and they displayed, they displayed this like frame from Half-Life with like this immensely different frame being generated. And like sure, the lighting and all this stuff looks really cool and it's it takes this like old game with like shitty textures or whatever and, and kind of almost remade it. But that's the thing, right? The intent of the frame was completely different. Foliage that straight up disappears, windows are covered, the model of the gun is like completely changed, uh, and the sky is different, all this stuff. Like, it's it's like running like an Instagram filter on top of your game. And I really find that quite, quite strange. You know, the artistic intent or whatever you want to call it is like completely gone. <laughs> the other thing I also want to point out is I do agree that it feels really disingenuous to say that you'll get the same performance with a uh, with a 5070 as a 4090. 
Uh, you know, the 4090 has like 16,000 CUDA cores. Uh, the 57 has like 6,000. Uh, 4090 has like 128 ray tracing cores. The 5070 has 48. Uh, 49 has like 24 gigs of RAM, which is a lot. Uh, 57 is 12. So, so like there's, there's a pretty big difference between these cards. So the asterisks they have there is like, when you're using multi-frame generation on the 5070 series cards, you're gonna be able to get the same performance and perform as well as the 4090. So like, it's a very big like asterisk, I would say. Those those AI fake frames are doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Uh, but, but I guess time will tell if people actually feel like this is a fair comparison or not once the cards actually drop. I will say though, as a Unreal Engine developer, uh, these upscaling, uh, techniques are really, really, really powerful uh, when we're working in the editor because it means that you know I can have the editor open in like four on a 4K monitor um, because the editor takes up a real a lot of real estate. So not having to be worried about you know it needing to render the game as well as doing all the other editor related things uh, uh, and just like relying on upscaling is, is very beneficial in that case because you don't really care too much about quality uh, when you're developing. You you care about it when you're testing, but you don't really care about it when you're, you're in the editor and doing other things. Uh, you just want everything to be as fast as possible there. So in those instances, DLSS is really, really, really powerful. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the whole matter of DLSS and NVIDIA and whatnot. But yeah, let me know what you think. Put Put, put, give me that sweet engagement in the comments and uh, let me know if you're going to pick up a 50 series card once they drop. That's it for me. Take care.